viewers, and welcome back to the self made Auto Channel. Got us a 2014 Cadillac ETS. It's got the big four cylinder in it, it needs brakes all the way around. We're gonna start with the front, and then in another video, do the rear. And then in another video, we're gonna change the radiator, which sounds like a big rigmarole, like five hour job, they're saying. So, I don't know what that'll entail, but that's in another video. This video, front brakes. First thing first, you have to safely support your vehicle. And then take the wheels off to gain access to the set of brakes. Looks like we have a socket right here that'll work. Come on, square peg, square hole. Ooh, got them off. And now it's stuck in my socket. Yes, I know that's a chrome socket. I heard you. Calm down. Ah, that's lovely. Lovely, lovely. There. No worries. Remove the wheel, not the tire. I was scolded. Technically, that's the wheel-tire combo. Now, we will remove the brake caliper. Looks like it has some bolts of the 10 millimeter variety, or the 10 millimeter size anyways. Probably six millimeter bolts. Up here, down here, and up there. Wherever. We'll zip them off. Oh, Chevrolet. We're gonna need a hooking device. We'll start to remove our caliper and then we'll Pull it over, let the piston come in a little bit. Have a look at the boot, make sure we don't need a caliper. Phenolic pistons, they look good. And we're gonna give it a hook. Hang it up here, out of the way. Find some place for our light that's not annoying. We can remove our pads at this time if you elect to do so. Be like, yeah, those pads are nice and thick. Well, you'd be right. They're seized in there pretty good. Insides of the rotors are pretty well had, uh, pretty rusty. Other side was absolutely horrible. Now, this set of pads that we obtained did not come with hardware, sadly enough. And I cannot have any hardware today, so we have to be very ginger in removing and reusing which is typically not my habit. This has nice hardware on it, it's stainless, so. Yeah, you know, it goes against everything else we always say, but it's kind of a do as I say, not as I do type thing. Uh, this does not happen very often. I'll tell you that much. But when it does, it does. So we're gonna save those. Now I think the bracket bolts or of the 21 style socket. So we'll get the impact again here. We'll go back there and zip them off. Now there's the one. Put that to the side. And there's the number two. Right there. Set that up to the side. Now, we need a T something, maybe T30. Fits well. Get our line packed here. We'll take the rotor bolt out. And that's that little fella right there. Now that may be missing on your application. Uh, have no fear, it's not super important. The wheel will hold your rotor on. Oh, she's crusty. Oh, there she is. Yeah, so the inside of this rotor is not absolutely horrible. Uh, nor as near as bad as the other side was, but pretty crusty. Lots of crust back there. Bearing sounds pretty good still. So we'll clean it up. Now this just has two surfaces in which the rotor rides on its outer lip and the inner lip so you don't have to worry about getting a lot of the crust off 
in the middle. Fancy. Get rid of a little two to the film. Made from sheep. Baby sheep. I don't know if that's a fact. If they use baby sheep or not. But got some rotors. Yeah, some napper rotors here. Uh, not a sponsor, of course. Uh, this one had already been opened in the package and already had somebody's mitts all over it. I seen it. We're gonna go to torque setting number one for that screw. That's 89 inch pounds. Let's get some of the good stuff. The good stuff. I really got scolded last break video. Holy smokes, I think on the V-dub I don't think I used any. People were upset. In a playful, jokingly type manner, so don't take that the wrong way. So we'll get that wiped off. We'll do the inside too. I can't just about catch. The rotors for this car were rather expensive, which I was kind of, felt kind of odd. That's why we didn't uh, get the coated ones. The lady hardly ever drives this car. I think it's only got 60,000 miles on it. Radiator smoked anyways, peeing the antifreeze all over my floor there. We just put a battery in it. We did a video on that. Quite a rigmarole there. See, it jump started every time she wanted to drive it, but now it's due for inspection and whatnot, so. Anyways, that's enough chit chat. We're gonna go get the brick caliper bracket cleaned up. Pins feel really good. Let's see how lubed up they are. Oh, she's slippery. Look at that. They're still nice and nice and greasy. Whoop. There's that. We're gonna clean this one up the old-fashioned way. Oh, old school. Uh, let's see. I gotta be able to do this so you can see and I can see. So we're gonna loosen up the old vice here. Now this vice doesn't have a name. That old Dave, he's over. In the, he's over in the other side. This, uh, I don't know what name of this one. We'll call it Red, old Big Red. And we're gonna use these special brake caliper files. Link in the description. Can't remember the name. Mueller and Kelp, something like that. Uh, fantastic. Super aggressive. Me. Yes, I know it's not the proper way to use a file also. They have a scraping end on them, which is great. You go through, scrape off the big chunks. There's always one machinist in the crowd I'm telling you not to drag your file backwards and all that stuff. Might be true. Come in a couple different sizes too. You got a skinny one and a thick one, so depends on what you're what you're into. Or you know, if it doesn't fit, obviously you have to use the smaller one. But you can get all of the different angles on here. And it removes rust rather quickly. Then it starts removing material, which you don't want to do. Just want to get the rust rust gone. And we squared back up here. Then we'll go hit them on the wire wheel. Why don't I just wire wheel them at first, you ask? Well, I find, at least with my wire wheel, that it is not aggressive enough. It's mean, but it's not aggressive. And all it seems to do is just polish up the rust. You know, smooths it over, makes it look like you did a good job when actually you didn't. I like to remove the chunks first. Use the scraping end here. Get right in there, get right off there. Once you got the big chunks gone. <coughs> oh, is that you, Rona? I think that was a rust chip, actually. Get that off there. Then you just go through the file and give it the finish, finish look. Thank you. 
got a two thousand dollar sandblaster we're over here with a twenty dollar file maybe more than twenty dollars don't quote me on that trying to be relatable show different ways make you feel better that side's pretty chunky I'll flip her around and give her some special attention over here okay that was let me go polish that up on old Roger. Man, today is YouTube wacko day. Let me tell you what, these people and their stinking phone calls. One guy calls, I think he's drunk. He's called like five times, keeps leaving messages. He just got added to the ban list. One time I let it slide, two times maybe, three times I forgot, fourth time I'm like sick of listening to this guy. Give me all sorts of advice. I need to get rid of the crappy tools I work with. And then he calls back to tell me watch another video, my tool's not so crappy now. And just, the guy just kept going and going and going. That's the problem with the hashtag stay at home thing. Put a little silicone paste on there. And oh yeah, make sure the back of your hardware is not you know, rust chunk stuck to it. And obviously replace it if you can. I should have, I, didn't, I did not realize those pads that we've got did not come with hardware because 95% of them do. And it's too late to get some today, so uh, after I install them, we're just going to shine up the inside just a little bit here. Just make sure there's no hunk of chunk of stuff in there. Yeah, like I say, these appear to be stainless, so I'm not super worried about it. The hardware looks like it's in good shape. Let me get the pads. Now the pad on this one has a, on this side, driver's side, has a squealer on it, faces towards the bottom once it's all assembled. And once your pads are in, you know, if you've got all the rust removed, they should move, you know, relatively easily by hand. So we'll get them mounted up in there. Oops, whoops. So there, they're all good to go. Now, we gotta get a little bit of blue Loctite here. One thing I found interesting is in service data, TM says, you know, to use Loctite, blah, 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 such and such, certain number. And then they tell you to let it sit for at least 10 minutes prior to installing, which isn't, isn't this anaerobic? I mean, I, I, don't, I think 10 minutes later we come back and it's still in liquid form because it's still exposed to air. I don't know. What do I know? That's why GM builds cars and I don't, because I don't know that kind of stuff. Just didn't make much sense to me, but. Anywho, that's gonna be annoying. Let's unhook that. We're not gonna let it sit 10 minutes. Or we did let it sit 10 minutes, I'll just tell you that. You don't know either way. So we let that sit 10 minutes. And it did say prior to installing, it didn't say anything else, so. There's that, we'll get the Ugga Dugga gun. We're gonna set that on torque setting number one. Now we're gonna set it on torque setting number two. All right, now we'll grab the old torquer and the 21. And we will torque it to 111. 1111 foot pounds. Make sure that's going the right way. 
There's 111. There's 111. Now, step number two. We need to go 30 degrees. So we'll let our torque wrench calibrate here. Which I think ends up being about 190 foot pounds, roughly. Let's see, let's get 30 degrees. 193.9 on that one. One ninety seven point nine on that one, so there's that. That'll keep the folks happy there. We're gonna make sure our caliper presses back. Should have done this way back in the beginning, but we didn't. But we will now. Dip, dip, pushes in nice. Pushed all the junk and debris back into the ABS system, so the ABS system will be trash. At least that's what it will tell you in the comment section. We're going to put a little bit of silicone grease or whatever your favorite brake lube is. Now, why am I not using the purple Permatex Extreme? Simply because I ran out and I have silicone brake lube here on hand right now until my purple stuff shows up so uh, I know we got that question a lot on our last break video what happened to Permatex Extreme what happened to the Harbor Freight Impact why do you suck <laughs> it's like whoa whoa fella remember I have a bunch of different sides to my shop here so if I'm working over here as opposed to on the other side I use a different set of tools so uh, you know prevents me from having to walk back and forth to the other side of shop. So yes, I still have my Harbor Freight impacts. I've got DeWald impacts, I've got Astro impacts, Snap-on, Mac, Ingersoll, Wing Wong, stuff you've never heard of. Lots of different tools. So just because I use something in one video and not in the next video, doesn't mean I don't have it anymore or it broke or something like that. It's just, I have lots of toolboxes, lots of different kinds. All right. I think the half inch torque wrench is probably a little overkill, but I do have a 10 mil socket for it. So I'm gonna set this down, let it calibrate. And then we're going to go to 21 foot pounds. Let her tune down here. There's 21. Ah, I'll be darned, actually, a local call. Twenty-one foot pounds. Cheap. Just double checked them. That's why they didn't move that much because I was talking to the to the lady on the phone and I torqued them. So that's all good. Your caliper should move freely like this one does. Everything's free. Put your wheel on. Tighten her up. Pump up your brakes. Check your brake fluid. Take it for a rip. And that is pretty much it, folks. Uh, like I say, throw the tire on. We'll torque the wheel. Pump up the brakes. Make sure the fluid's full. All that stuff will go around, we'll burnish in the pads. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. Typically I take you folks on my little toot around town down the old North Maple Run, I call it, and the loop-de-loop -loop around Pigtail Alley, we call it. Uh, just making that stuff up. Uh, but like I say, we do have to put a radiator in, so I'm not gonna take it out, it's leaking all over the floor. I'm gonna finish the back brake here. In the next video, it'll probably pop up there in the video thing. So while you're waiting for that, don't wait on anything else and go down there and subscribe, ring the bell. Leave a comment, all that stuff. Just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.